Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Attorney Brooke here. Today I am reacting to the triple episode, I Caught My Wife With Condoms in Couples Court YouTube channel. So let's get started. I'm actually jumping to the second episode here that is Donnell versus Starks. Been together 14 years, you have a family. But cheating allegations have caused you, Ms. Donald, to seek information regarding a divorce from Mr. Starks. Yes, Your Honor. Tell me about why you've opened your case. Two years ago, uh, we got into an argument, and he left that night. When he left, um, he was down the street with a friend, and the next morning when he comes home and he's explaining what happened that night, he told me... When I talk to her, don't believe whatever she tells me. Okay, number one red flag, you're married for 14 years and you don't come home at night and then you come home in the morning. You got me f***ed up if you think I'm letting my husband stay out overnight somewhere. And since then, I've just... It's little things that make me feel like he's cheating with my friend. The situation she's talking about, I, um... I did leave. Also, I'm a little stressed because there's two judges behind the bench. You know, never have I seen a situation where we have two judges presiding over a case, but hey, I'm with it. The young lady that she's pertaining to was down the hill. Her cousin gave me a ride to my mother's house. Mm -hmm. That's the only contact I've had with that woman in 14 years. But you, you knew something was going to pop off. That's why you went back home and said, whatever you hear, don't no, believe it. Hold on, Your Honor. That's what she said. You don't... You deny that I happened. do not recollect saying anything like that. So what are you here to prove today? I'm here to prove that I love my wife, mm -hmm. I'm here for her, and that I'm not a cheater. Okay. I believe in Jesus Christ, I got married one time, right. and I'm not a cheater. Okay. And I'm standing on that. Bottom line. Ain't no more lines. Well, I'd say that was a solid opening statement there. Ms. Donald, that you have gone to see a divorce attorney. Yes, ma'am. I've seen lawyers, I've talked to everybody that I need to. If this doesn't work, if he's cheating on me, then... I got my foot out the door. I'm ready to go. So, why do you believe he's cheating right now? Well, we we've had incidents. Uh, I do have evidence, if I could give it to you. All right. Objection, hearsay. Objection, lack of foundation. Objection, failure to <laughs> lay the proper predicate. But that's fine. We're just in the couple's court here. So, tell us what we're looking at. Um, well, one day he told me that he was going to work, and um, later on that day, I was looking at our GPS. It's kind of together on the phone, and it showed that he was at a hotel from 8 to 11.47. Uh-oh. And he tells me that he was just driving through the parking lot, but I don't know no uh, parking lots. Three hours. Three hours worth of driving in the parking lot. Okay. Yeah, he's supposed to be at work. And you find on the GPS that it's at a hotel. Yes, ma'am. Because that screenshot seems legit. Ma'am, I work in a moving industry. So, I, I, I usually meet my boss wherever close to where we're gonna go because he drives me, I have no license. Okay. So, the job we did that day was at um, a place adjacent to a hotel. Yes, sir. So, if I'm in the... This wife is like... You... I'm saying I ain't never been nowhere with no woman in a hotel outside of a hotel in a back car seat since I've been with my wife. That was oddly specific. But if you were at, if you were meeting your boss to go to work, why does it have you there just for three hours? No, I'm, uh, I was at work all day. I don't understand. What we need to do is probably call the GPS company and figure <laughs> that out. <laughs> so you're... Oh, now we're gaslighting. We're gaslighting everyone, including the GPS company. Also, that same day, um, he called co co-workers that he was supposed to be with. If you at work with the co-workers, what do you need to call them for? The reason I called my co-worker is because I'm moving. We have an elevator. If the elevator gets stuck, or if I'm in the elevator, who you gonna call? You got me? Mr. Starks, you got an answer for everything, it seems like. You got, you got a line... Cheaters always do. It's that web of lies. They always got something to say. You've been living I've been being accused years. of cheating for, since 2000. But have you told her about I what this dress is doing every day. to you? She should see it. That's my wife. Okay, whether or not he's cheating, let's just say for conversation purposes, he's not cheating. It would get pretty old to have a significant other that's like constantly pecking you and challenging you and nagging you based off of their own insecurities because they don't want to trust you. And if she's been doing this that long term of a duration for several years, yeah, I would be pretty irritated too to be constantly be accused of doing something I'm not. He don't see the stress that he causes our whole house. What is your reaction to that? My reaction is I'm here. I've been the same person since I've met my wife. I've never... Well, there's been a, a situation in 2004 or 5 
where I cheated on my wife. We were dating then. There it is. Broke the trust in 04 and 05. You were dating We were then. dating then. We were three months, four months together. And he cheated on me and for a year. This has been two years. This okay, hold up. I'm not one to judge, but if it was me personally, and I had been dating my soon-to-be husband for over a year or what have you, and he had been cheating on me for over a year, and then you choose to go and marry that man, you, my friend, signed up for that type of marriage. You knew the kind of pig he was before, and you chose to marry him anyways. I don't know, not feeling so bad for you now. But, okay, so you had cheated in the past, you admitted it, you took him back, but you understand why her trust is broken. Yes. Yeah, can't be the best foundation to start a long-term relationship or a marriage on. So, Ms. Donald, is there any particular person that you're concerned about that he's cheating with? With my neighbor. Wait, it was the neighbor, the cousin, someone at the hotel. I'm a little confused, but here we go. I, I want to believe that he's not cheating, but it's just the little things that happen, like our GPS. It'll say that he's at my home and he's not at my home. So but that's she's... saying that the GPS ain't working. Or you're leaving your phone at the house because you know your wife is tracking you and you're trying to be sneaky about where you're at. You brought an exhibit to demonstrate what you're talking about. Yes, is that sir. right? Yes. Okay. Would you step to the monitor, please? Okay. We, we were into it that night. So he went to a friend's house and I wanted to, you know, reconcile that night. I wanted him to come home. So I go out to his friend's house. At 1.45, I get there and we sit for a minute. You know, I asked him if he wanted to come home. He said that he wanted to stay because he could get to his job better that way, although I could have drove him. So I leave and I get home at 2.27. Mm -hmm. Later on that night, my phone pings from his phone on the GPS, and it says that he's at my house at 346. He was never at my house. I am so stressed. Like, the effort that this woman and this couple is going through to prove this. Like, you guys are clearly in a toxic marriage. Like, maybe it is time to kind of pull the cord here. All right, Mr. Starks, are you cheating with this neighbor? Never. Were you at her house? Never. You were not at her home? Never. All right, look, this is pretty much a situation of he said, she said. This is very circumstantial. There's really not much that either party is showing to truly corroborate their narrative of events of what happens. She throws up some like random ass screenshot of, I don't know, some timestamps. And then all he's saying in rebuttal is, I haven't cheated. All I know is I'm going to gaslight the fuck out of you and I haven't cheated. And you know, whatever, it is what it is, but let's see. All right, Ms. Donna, you have a witness. <laughs> 2005 or 6. Uh, In between five or six. <laughs> Ms. Donald, oh, you have a witness. <laughs> Sir, would you please stand? Okay, now we have a witness. This is getting a little bit better here. A witness. <laughs> would you please you state your name for the court and your relationship to the parties? Uh, I'm Randy Donnell. This is my sister. All right, Mr. Donald, can you tell us, do you believe your brother-in-law is cheating, and if so, why? I have reason to believe he's cheating because, uh, there's a lot of things that don't add up, and, uh, I was present for most of them, so... Have you seen him with the woman in question? Definitely. I go outside and, you know, they having a good conversation. I'm, I walk up and everything stops and, you know, they split ways. There's even been a time where he said, uh, I can't even talk to my neighbor and... Right. Why do you got to be sketchy and stop talking? You know, that situation, anytime you walk up to a group of people and it gets quiet, you know, without a doubt, they were talking smack about you or they were saying something they weren't supposed to be doing. Times. You know, so you, because you've seen it more than once, it's so noticeable that they must be talking about something they, they're doing. Right. You know what people... But also, can I just say, just because you think a sketchy conversation is going on, they're saying something they're not supposed to be saying, that doesn't equate an equal cheating, nor does that equal adultery. So let's be cautious here with this type of testimony. Yeah. <laughs> and you, and when you come into a room, then it just... Everybody stops talking. Yeah. Right. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Donna. Right. Sit down. Literally the most worthless testimony I think I've ever seen, but it is what it is. Well, because of this, this court has done a complete investigation of this matter. Okay, first of all, a court would never conduct their own investigation. I get it. This is for entertainment purposes. But your narrative or your evidence or your facts of the case based on your own sole testimony or exhibits 
that you prepare. And a judge is just sifting through the facts. The judge is a fact finder at this type of, of proceeding. So a judge isn't going to ever conduct their own investigation. But I am curious to see what they have done here. Good day, Miss Cisco. How are you? I am well, Your Honor. How are you? Doing good. It's good to see you. Thank you. It's good to see you as well. Would you state your credentials, please, for the court? Yes, Your Honor. I am a former Department of Defense certified military interrogator who has interrogated members of Al Qaeda and Taliban Hello. shortly after 9 11. And since that time, I have been training law enforcement personnel, military personnel. And okay, look, if this is the type of witness or expert witness that I believe they're trying to establish here that's going to interrogate or question or investigate or evaluate this gentleman in some sorts to see if he was actually cheating, she's going to give some sort of recommendation. That's something that the wife would have hired someone that she would have sought out as one of her witnesses and she would have prepared that witness to be on stand. But again, let's see what she has to say. And in interrogation and interviewing techniques. Tell us what you did to investigate this case. I had the accused write a witness statement and I analyzed that for any indicators of truthfulness and deception. I studied the case file and I put together an interrogation plan and then I interrogated Mr. Starks. So what did you conclude? So for someone who has conducted hundreds of interrogations and interviews since 2003 and has been catching liars since then, I do not believe that Mr. Sarks is cheating on his wife and I do believe he's being truthful. The results are in. Ms. Donald, you have a smile on your face. What's going through your mind hearing the results? It made me feel a lot better, you know? Okay, look, also, if you had this type of expert witness that conducted this evaluation, they're given some sort of recommendation to the court, that's something that, in general, a judge is going to take into consideration in making a finding of whether or not adultery occurred. But it's not outcome determinative in the sense that that one specific report or recommendation is just the end-all, be-all of this entire case. So let's take that with a grain of salt. Al-Qaeda. <laughs> <laughs> I still feel like it's a lot of things that we need to work on, you know? Look, in all reality, this woman is never going to be secure with her relationship. This is something that has been ongoing, these accusations, this insecurity for, what, over a decade now? So I don't think this one woman coming on the stand is what cured all the issues in their relationship. But you also have to let the past go. Yep. Are you ready to let the past go? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Are you ready to look forward to a happy future and all of this behind. Okay, look, in general, there's something to be said in the legal world about what exactly constitutes cheating. Here in Texas, I practice family law in Texas, we recognize the concept of adultery. And adultery is extremely difficult to prove in Texas to the extent that you have to prove that sexual intercourse literally occurred. And so that is like, you know, a video of it happening. Something that literal, just flirting or these little side conversations that look like they're not supposed to be happening some little flirty text messages, a receipt here and there. That is not going to get you to the level of a finding of adultery that you need to have those fault grounds for a divorce in Texas. And even beyond that, if you can get over the hump of even proving adultery in Texas, judges, depending on what county you're in, some are more conservative, some are more liberal. The more liberal counties in general don't really care if adultery occurred. Most people, like judges, like they just don't care. Like, yeah, you cheated on your wife. You had sexual intercourse, like tiss tiss, slap on the wrist. What judges really care about is if you had ongoing long term relationships with a paramour to the extent that you're spending your spouse's community property money. Let's say you're earning income and that husband is spending that income on a third party paramour outside of the marriage. That's money that the wife had interest in. And so that wife is entitled to some sort of repayment based off of what was spent on a girlfriend. That is when judges care. So we're talking about luxurious vacations, date night, wine, schmoozing, fashion, clothes, going out to the club, gambling. Those are kinds of things if you're spending on a third party paramour that a judge is really going to reel it in on. And that's really the only thing they care about. All right, you guys, that wraps up that episode of The Couples Court. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Give us a like if you enjoyed this type of reaction. If you like seeing that nitty gritty family law content, I'm your girl. I am family law attorney through and through. Go check out my personal YouTube, YouTube channel, Attorney Brooke, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Bye. Big Verdict.